Hey guys, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and today is the very last day of 2019, which means it's the end of the year, but it's also the end of the decade. And as we look forward to the 20, uh, the, literally the 20s now, we are going to be in the 20s, we look back at the last decade to see just how far we've come, what wonderful advancements we've made in technology or cybersecurity or anything else, but Oftentimes, those advancements are born out of a lot of failures, and some of them have been spectacular. And so I want to go through literally the last decade of some of the largest failures that we have had in technology. Basically, one, because I think they're interesting, but two, to really understand that by virtue of this, oftentimes newer, better tech has been born. And so with that, Let's start in 2012 with Apple Maps. Now, if you recall when that came out, basically, it was very much hyped. It had fancy 3D imagery, flyovers, and all of this. It was built for iOS 6, and basically, it was a complete disaster at launch. Some of the things that I found here were a farm was incorrectly labeled as an airport, directions that led people literally over train tracks as opposed to on actual streets, and a lot of dis a lot of uh, directions that required you to swim from one continent to another. I personally remember a lot of people complaining uh, on my uh, social media that says basically I wanted to go from you know one city to the other, and it literally took me to the other side of the country. And so Apple Maps has clearly improved you know, over the last seven, eight years or so, but it definitely helped Google Maps solidify its position as an industry leader in Google Maps itself, I think has taken some of the elements that Apple Maps was coming out um, coming out with at the time as unique and really honed it into Google's product. And now Google Maps is the go-to, and here we are. The next one I wanna talk about is Amazon because even though Amazon is one of the largest corporations in the world, they too have had some spectacular failures. And in 2014, 2015, they basically came out with the Amazon Fire Phone. Now, the Fire Phone, which was platformed on Android, was absolutely great for buying things on Amazon, but it was horrible at being an actual smartphone. You couldn't install any Google apps through the Play Store, even though it was an Android. Um, it had this sensor-based navigation that was really kind of gimmicky, didn't work that well. And so Android, excuse me, Amazon, Amazon announced it would stop selling the phone in September 2015, the same day that Apple unveiled its new iPhone at uh, Apple's uh, Apple's uh, typical annual event in the fall. So here we are, the Amazon Fire phone. If you still have one, you're one of the few. It might be a collector's item at some point, but basically that helps solidify both Apple and Google Android from the other major makers as the leaders and Amazon bowed out. Speaking of Android, our next major failure comes from 2017, and that is the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Now, the reviews for this thing were amazing. It was supposed to be a Ferrari and beautiful and completely ahead of its game, and, Am uh, and Samsung was selling a ton of these until they got all explodey about a week into their actual sales. I actually remember, um, you know, during that period, I was interested in getting one, and then I started hearing reports of them catching fire and uh, decided not to. I remember being in an airport where they would announce that if you have an Amazon Note, or excuse me, a Samsung Note 7 phone, that they wouldn't let you on the plane. Uh, the, the Note would basically not be allowed to go with you. And so uh, Samsung lost something like 22 to $24 billion in market cap, but they handled it absolutely the right way and basically created a standard for reporting on errors and issues that uh, we now see today and other companies are starting to copy. So we learned quite a bit from the Note 7, but man, that was a bit of a disaster. Moving on, we're going to be talking about something called Juicero. This is from 2016. Now, this was an internet-connected juicer that originally cost $700, which they later lowered to $400, and it required these proprietary packs of, I guess, fruit sold separately through either a subscription or at a local grocery store, like a Whole Food. This company actually raised $120 million dollars in venture capital from some uh, from such companies like Alphabet, which is the parent of Google. In April 2017, though, Bloomberg News published a video showing how the packs of pre-pulp fruits and vegetables could simply be squeezed out by hand, which basically made the juicer itself 
obsolete. It made it irrelevant. You could just do it by hand. Why stick it in a $700 juicer and all of that? Their CEO tried to basically criticized this saying that it was messy and mediocre and you needed the juicer but at that point the damage was basically done and this thing pretty much went off the market and so if you have a juicero you're one of the few left moving on we're going to be talking about we work now they have been in the news in the last couple of months they started in 2010 and Basically, um, they exploded throughout the entire decade in popularity, attracting investors left and right. And the founder, Adam Newman, used documents featuring basically projections of where this thing could possibly go to convince SoftBank uh, Soft and others that WeWork wasn't just a real estate company, but it was actually a technology platform like an Uber or an Airbnb. And most importantly, that its estimated value is worth billions. Now, uh, Newman was continuing to raise capital even though he was making questionable moves that the, the investors weren't a fan of. So, for example, he acquired the trademark for We, basically forcing WeWork to buy it for $5.9 billion. That is absolutely huge. Now, in 2019, their uh, value plummeted 80% when everything kind of came crashing to home. And they lost, they went from $47 billion in value to $8 billion earlier in 2019. And the company almost ran out of cash. Newman then stepped down in September of 2019. And in November, WeWork laid off 2,400 employees. I think there's a lesson in that that not everything uh, can be an Uber or an Airbnb. But from what I understand, Uber has been losing money left and right, trying to establish itself as a brand as well. And finally, I want to talk about Theranos. Theranos was founded in 2003, but oh man, was this decade a disaster for that company. And probably one of my most disappointing things, because I followed this one pretty closely. I thought this was very interesting. Now, Theranos' founder was Elizabeth Holmes, she actually dropped out of Stanford at age 19 to work on a blood testing product that she claimed would revolutionize medicine. Uh, she did TED Talks to this uh, to this case, a whole bunch of stuff. Now, Theranos' special machine called the Mini Lab could run hundreds of tests with just a few drops of blood. It could allegedly detect viruses like Zika and perform uh, uh, routine tests like blood uh, glucose measurement. It was also faster, cheaper, and more accurate than existing lab equipment, lab equipment. And this is all according to Elizabeth Holmes per multiple interviews, per her TED Talk, per everything else. And this was the first of many lies that she told throughout this past decade. The hype surrounding Theranos' technology was boosted by things like magazine covers, Forbes, uh, New York Times, Style. Like I said, she did a TED Talk and all of this. She was considered one of the innovators of the decade at one point. She was a self-made billionaire. And Theranos at its peak was worth $9 billion. And the whole thing was a lie. The whole thing. It was just a complete and utter lie. According to a complaint filed um, by the Security Exchange Commission, the SEC, the founder faked demonstrations for Walgreens executives by testing blood on outside of a, uh, on outside equipment instead of using its own to basically fake the results for this and Walgreens bought in. So basically she was lying that Theranos technology had also been used in the battlefield. It actually hadn't. She was telling investors that the machine didn't need FDA approval. Oh, it absolutely did here in the United States. The mini lab also produced faulty test results for patients in Arizona on a trial run where one woman was sent to an emergency room after inaccurate tests showed signs of an imminent stroke. So it was a complete disaster. I think there's a lot of lawsuits going on. Obviously, Theranos is no more. Elizabeth Holmes stepped down, as did a lot of investors. Tails between their legs. And so those were the worst uh, tech disasters of the 2010s. And I think these are a real good lesson to you know, how we develop as a society, how we look at the Theranoses of the world or even the Apple Maps or the Note 7s and then improve on that. Now, I'd like to bring up some honorable mentions before I bring this up that I thought were interesting, but not necessarily as disastrous. In 2015, 2016, 
All the rage was hoverboards until we found out they like to catch fire. Smart cards is the next thing from 2014 to about 2017. And these are companies like Coin who basically promised you that they would put all of your credit cards into a single credit card that you could then program and swipe. So you could basically turn a dial or program it in to say, this is my Visa, this is my MasterCard, this is my Discover, whatever it is. And then you could hand that over to uh, you know whatever you're buying, like whatever retail you're buying. And finally, my honorable mention, and it's been a walking disaster, but that would be Facebook, and you know I've got to bring them up. Um, they are basically the data breach, data breach king of the decade. They have had more data breaches and have exposed billions upon billions at this point if you aggregate 2010 to 2019 records with Cambridge Analytica, hundreds of millions of records in 2019 alone. They are a walking disaster. And so with all of that, those are your biggest tech disasters of 2019. Did you buy a Note 7? Were you using Apple Maps? I'd love to know. Did you invest in Theranos? I hope you didn't. But that is what it, that is what it is, and I'd love to hear your feedback. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. Uh, and please subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. And I hope everybody has a great new year and a wonderful 2020. Take care.